So we're starting with an existing developer cloud service project. We created an empty project. Um, we created a Git repository. This is the URL to it. We're going to copy it. We're going to use it in a minute. And we also added a few issues and tasks that we are tracking. And we created an agile board. We started a sprint. And you can see some of the tasks and who they are assigned to, what their status over here on the Agile dashboard. So now let's switch over to JDeveloper, where we're creating our Oracle SRA application. You can see a Beeple flow here. And what we're going to start with is we're going to start by versioning our SRA application. So we're going to create basically a local Git instance of this application. We're going to have an initial commit um, done here and just go through this wizard to version our application. And now that it's a local copy, the next step for us would be to connect to the um, team server. So we already have a connection established here. We're going to search the list of projects on developer cloud service. So this is where we can see our SOA project. And you can see that directly from inside JDeveloper. developer, I can go and look up at the tasks that we have in our current sprint, for example. And I can see, for example, this task, which requires us to check the code into Git, which is exactly what we were planning on doing. So first of all, this is not assigned right now, so I'm going to uh, pick up this one and assign it to myself. Then I'm going to submit the changes over to the repository. And then we're going to actually do the check-in, or basically push operation in Git. Here we're going to paste the URL for our Git repository as part of the developer cloud service. We're going to need to provide our password for the username. And um, this basically creates a master instance of our application, or a master branch. And now that this is done, what we can do next is we can actually mark this activity to be resolved. So um, there are lots of properties here that you can change and you can add attachment and sub-issues and comments and stuff like that. We're just going to show you how you can update the status up here to be resolved. Okay, and we'll click Submit. So basically, from inside JDeveloper, we see our tasks, we're able to update them directly into the developer cloud service. We can take our code and push it into the Git repository over there. The next thing that we're seeing here is the next task is to create some end build files. So this is how we're going to actually automate our delivery of the application. So we're going to pick up from the end options, uh, creating a build file for this project. And we're going to check this checkbox that will create a deployment package option. So this is using OJ deploy which is a JDeveloper utility to create the deployment. We got two files created for us, the build XML and the build properties XML. The build properties has a lot of uh, settings for the properties for our current build, which currently point to our local instance. So you can copy this code that will be on the blog um, over, but this basically changes those pointers to point to the instance of JDeveloper that is part of the developer cloud service. So you can see over here, we are pointing uh, to our uh, workspace, we are pointing to our project, and then we use a bunch of um, variables to indicate the location of JDeveloper in Developer Cloud Service. In the build properties, oh, sorry, in the build text or XML file, we just need one more line, which is a pointer to the environment variable okay, that we're using in the build properties. So we're going to inject it here as basically the first line in our build project, like that. OK, so now we have our build files. We can go ahead and check those into our Git repository. So again, going over, choosing to do, for example, a commit all, uh, which will pick those files. We can then put in a commit message. And another thing to notice is that at the bottom of the screen, we have a place where we can look up our tasks. And we can associate the current commit with a specific task that we're working on. Um, for example, we're working on this task. And we can indicate to close this task after we're doing a push of the changes to the Git repository. So again, you're basically relating here a task that you're working on with a specific commit that you're doing into the Git repository. 
Again, we're going through the process of pushing the changes. We're still working on the master branch, and now the changes are up in our cloud. So let's switch over and look at our cloud portal. So first of all, let's um, reload this page. Okay, and we'll see that this task, for example, is now marked as completed. Right? And then we'll go over to the code tab. Okay, and if you dr drill into the process order project, you can see our build properties and build XML. So now let's go to the build tab and we're going to create a new job. So this is a build job. We're going to call it SOA package. You can give it any name you want. And we're going to set some properties. So we're going to use JDK 8 because we're using JDeveloper 12.2.1. We're going to point to our source control, so our Git repository over here. Um, and we're also going to point to specifically the master branch there. In the triggers, we're going to indicate that any commit to the uh, software configuration management is going to start a build. And in terms of steps, this is a simple build process. We're going to have one step, which is a deploy. Okay, so the deploy task inside our build XML file. Uh, you need to specify here the full um, path to this build file, as you can see here. And we're also going to do something in the post build. Um, we're going to archive the artifacts generated from this uh, build file. So again, um, notice where you're deploying your stuff into and just specify that directory over here. And by the way, right now in the video, I'm making a mistake, um, but we're going to fix it in a minute. and we're running a build now, okay? So the build is now queued. It's going to be picked up and executed by the developer cloud service instance. Let's go back into JDeveloper in the meantime and do some other work. We have one more task that we need to do and that's to fix one of the Beeple flows. So we're going to change this Beeple flow. We're going to take this invoke operation over here. Let's change the name here as a property. And that just shows you like a regular type of uh, workflow uh, in Beeple development, right? You're going to set various things and then you're going to save those things. So now that the file has been changed, you might want to version manage it, right? Now, the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to actually work on your master branch. What you probably want to do before that is actually branch into a new branch. So we're going to create a new branch give it a name, indicate that it's coming based on the master, and we're going to check this branch out. And then we're going to add the changed file into this branch, like that. Okay, and then we're going to also commit it. Next step, we're going to again provide some comment on this. And again, we can associate this commit with a specific task that we're working on from the list here. And we can indicate what to do with this task once we're done with the commit. Right. So now let's actually push this. Okay, it's going to create a new branch for us in the Git repository. And that's it. So let's go back into our cloud-based interface for developer cloud service. We can see that this build has actually finished successfully. We can go into the console and look at what uh, was output there. And you can see the OJ deploy working there during the deployment. And then we are going back to the jobs overview to look at the artifacts that we actually store. And this is where I actually do find out that there's an error there because we are not actually specified the right directory to archive. So if we scroll down, we can see where it's actually creating our uh, process order jar file. Okay. And we're going to pick up this directory location over here. Yeah, and we're missing the name of the application in front of the name of the project. So just copy this one over. And in the configuration of our build, we're going to add this in front of the directory, like that. All right, so this should fix it. 
and now we should be able to actually archive this stuff. So we're not actually going to run the build again right now. We're going to show you that the build can automatically be invoked. So to do that, we're going to do a merge request. A merge request is also a way for us to request that someone will review our code changes. So remember, we did some changes in a branch of the code. We want a manager, for example, to approve those changes. Uh, we can link this code review to a specific um, task or item that we're working on. Um, for example, this one. And then we're going to point to the Git repository, pick up this target, and the source, we're going to say who's going to review it. Alex, for example, can review our code. And we're creating a code review request or a merge request. At this point, Alex gets an email. He can go over, uh, look at the changes. He can see exactly what we changed. He can see that we added an invoke operation to our Beeple file. Remember that from JDeveloper. He can comment on the code and he can approve the merge or reject it. We're going to skip that stage and we're directly going to merge our code. So we're taking the changes we did in the branch and pushing them into the main branch. Okay. So now if you go back into the code tab and you go over here, you can actually see in the comment that this is a merged item. And you can go all the way down to actually sync the Beeple file directly in here. Okay, this is the full people file, not just the changes. Um, so that might not be very helpful right now, but you can actually see all the code of your project directly from the browser, which is nice. If we go now to the build, you can see that there's another job that has been queued for us. And this was automatically done because we made a change to our master branch. And this is the automation of code change, firing up a build process, okay? the build process running and executing until delivery. In the meantime, we can see again in the Agile board, uh, the other task has also been updated over there. And if we go back to the build, we can see the build is actually being executed live in front of our eyes right now. I'm gonna take it a few minutes to, or a few seconds to create our jar file. Nice, so our build finished successfully. If we go into it and we expand the artifacts directory now, we can actually see under the deploy directory the actual jar that was generated for us. We can download it, for example, if we want to deploy it locally. And uh, once we download it, you can actually open it, of course, and you would see there a normal SOA application packaged and ready to be deployed. All automated from developer cloud service.